Today is September the 25th. My name is Hunter, and we are on a journey into the loving heart of God. We meet here each day on this podcast to read from Scripture, to reflect, and to pray. We begin our reading in Jeremiah chapter 32, and then on to Psalm 91. From there we go to Amos chapter 6, 1 Timothy chapter 6, and Luke chapter 16, verses 19 through 31. This is the word of the Lord. Jeremiah 32. The following message came to Jeremiah from the Lord in the tenth year of the reign of Zedekiah, king of Judah. This was also the eighteenth year of the reign of King Nebuchadnezzar. Jerusalem was then under siege from the Babylonian army, and Jeremiah was imprisoned in the courtyard of the guard in the royal palace. King Zedekiah had put him there, asking why he kept giving this prophecy. This is what the Lord says. I am about to hand this city over to the king of Babylon, and he will take it. At that time the Lord sent a message. He said, Your cousin Hananel, son of Shulam, will come and say to you, Buy my field at Anathoth. By law you have the right to buy it before it is offered to anyone else. Then, just as the Lord had said he would, my cousin Hananel came and visited me in the prison. He said, Please, Buy my field at Anathoth, in the land of Benjamin. By law you have the right to buy it before it is offered to anyone else. So buy it for yourself. Then I knew that the message I had heard was from the Lord. So I bought the field at Anathoth, paying Hananel seventeen pieces of silver for it. I signed and sealed the deed of purchase before witnesses weighed out the silver and paid him. Then I took the sealed deed and the unsealed copy of the deed which contained the terms and conditions of the purchase, and I handed them to Baruch son of Nuriah and grandson of Mahasiah. He did all this in the presence of my cousin Hananel, the witness who had signed the deed, and all the men of Judah who were there in the courtyard of the guardhouse. Then I said to Baruch, as they all listened, This is what the Lord of Heaven's armies, the God of Israel, says, Take both this sealed deed and the unsealed copy, and put them into a pottery jar to preserve them for a long time. For this is what the Lord of Heaven's armies, the God of Israel, says. Some day people will again own property here in this land, and will buy and sell houses and vineyards and fields. Psalm 91, 1-6 through six. Those who live in the shelter of the Most High will find rest in the shadow of the Almighty. This I declare about the Lord. He alone is my refuge, my place of safety. He is my God, and I trust in Him. For He will rescue you from every trap and protect you from deadly disease. He will cover you with His feathers. He will shelter you with His wings. His faithful promises are your armor and protection. Do not be afraid of the terrors of the night, nor the arrow that flies in the day. Do not dread the disease that stalks in darkness, nor the disaster that strikes at midday. The Lord says, I will rescue those who love me. I will protect those who trust in my name. When they call on me, I will answer. I will be with them in trouble. I will rescue and honor them. I will reward them with a long life and give them my salvation. Amos chapter 6 What sorrow awaits you who lounge in luxury in Jerusalem, and you who feel secure in Samaria? You are famous and popular in Israel, and people go to you for help. How horrible for you who sprawl on ivory beds and lounge in your couches, eating the meat of tender lambs from the flock and of choice calves fattened in the stall. You sing trivial songs to the sound of the harp, and fancy yourself to be great musicians like David. You drink wine by the bowlful, and perfume yourself with fragrant lotions. You care nothing about the ruin of your nation. Therefore, you will be the first to be led away as captives, 
suddenly all your parties will end. 1 Timothy 6 Yet true godliness with contentment is itself great wealth. After all, we brought nothing with us when we came into the world, and we can't take anything with us when we leave it. So if we have enough food and clothing, let us be content. But people who long to be rich fall into temptation and are trapped by many foolish and harmful desires that plunge them into ruin and destruction. For the love of money is the root of all kinds of evil. And some people, craving money, have wandered from the true faith and pierced themselves with many sorrows. But you, Timothy, are a man of God. So run from all these evil things, pursue righteousness and a godly life, along with faith, love, perseverance, and gentleness. Fight the good fight for the true faith. Hold tightly to the eternal life to which God has called you which you have declared so well before many witnesses, and I charge you before God, who gives life to all, and before Christ Jesus, who gave a good testimony before Pontius Pilate, that you obey this command without wavering. Then no one can find fault with you from now until our Lord Jesus Christ comes again. For at just the right time, Christ will be revealed from heaven by the blessed and almighty God, the King of all kings and the Lord of all lords, he alone can never die, and he lives in light so brilliant that no human can approach him. No human eye has ever seen him, nor ever will. All honor and power to him forever. Amen. Teach those who are rich in this world not to be proud and not to trust in their money, which is so unreliable. Their trust should be in God who richly gives us all we need for our enjoyment. Tell them to use their money to do good. They should be rich in good works and generous to those in need, always being ready to share with others. By doing this, they will be storing up treasures as a good foundation for the future so that they may experience true life. Luke 16 19 through 31. Jesus said, There was a certain rich man who was splendidly clothed in purple and fine linen, and who lived each day in luxury. At his gate lay a poor man named Lazarus, who was covered with sores. As Lazarus lay there longing for scraps from the rich man's table, the dogs would come and lick his open sores. Finally, the poor man died and was carried by the angels to sit beside Abraham at the heavenly banquet. The rich man also died and was buried, and he went to the place of the dead. There, in torment, he saw Abraham in the far distance with Lazarus at his side. The rich man shouted, Father Abraham, have some pity. Send Lazarus over here to dip the tip of his finger in water and cool my tongue. I'm in anguish in these flames. But Abraham said to him, Remember that during your lifetime you had everything you wanted, and Lazarus had nothing. So now he is here being comforted, and you are in anguish. And besides, there is a great chasm separating us. No one can cross over to you from here, and no one can cross over to us from there. Then the rich man said, Please, Father Abraham, at least send him to my father's home, for I have five brothers, and I want him to warn them so they don't end up in this place of torment. But Abraham said, Moses and the prophets have warned them. Your brothers can read what they wrote. The rich man replied, No, Father Abraham, but if someone is sent to them from the dead, then they will repent of their sins and turn to God. But Abraham said, if they won't listen to Moses and the prophets, they won't be persuaded even if someone rises from the dead. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to St. Luke. Praise to you, Lord Christ. And now let us take some time for silent prayer and reflection.
Lord God, Almighty and Everlasting Father, you have brought us in safety to this new day. Preserve us with your mighty power, that we may not fall into sin or be overcome by adversity. And in all we do, direct us to the fulfilling of your purpose. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. O God, you have made of one blood all the peoples of the earth and sent your blessed Son to preach peace to those who are far and those who are near. Grant that people everywhere may seek after you and find you. Bring the nations into your fold, pour out your Spirit upon all flesh, and hasten the coming of your kingdom through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And now, Lord, make me an instrument of your peace. Where there is hatred, let me sow love. Where there is injury, pardon. Where there is doubt, faith. Where there is despair, hope. Where there is darkness, light. Where there is sadness, joy. O oh Lord, grant that I may not seek so much to be consoled as to console, to be understood as to understand, to be loved as to love. For it is in the giving that we receive, it is in the pardoning that we are pardoned. It is in the dying that we are born to eternal life. Amen. Almighty God, Father of all mercies, we, your grateful children, give you humble thanks for all your goodness and loving kindness to us and all whom you have made. We bless you for your creation, preservation, and all the blessings of this life. But above all, for your immeasurable love and the redemption of the world through our Lord Jesus Christ, for the means of grace and the hope of glory. And we pray, give us such an awareness of your mercies that with truly thankful hearts we may show forth your praise, not only with our lips, but with our lives, by giving up ourselves for your service and by walking before you in holiness and righteousness all our days. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be honor and glory throughout all ages. Amen. And now, as our Lord has taught us, we are bold to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who have trespassed against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Let me invite you to join us for tomorrow's podcast. We meet each day to journey together into the loving heart of God. You can also join our other podcast, The Daily Radio Bible, where we journey through the entire Bible over the course of a year. But more than that, what we desire most is to experience and have an encounter with the God who is love. Find out more at dailyradiobible.com. The music for this podcast was provided by the artist and composer David Neveu. Find out more about his music at davidneveu.com. And now let's go forward in God's joy. Let's let his joy be our strength. And let us always remember this, that you are loved. Alrighty, I'll talk to you again tomorrow. Bye-bye.